Alright, today I'm going to show you how to fix this error, the fan error. Um, you will have to buy a replacement fan. They look like this. This copper thing, the fan. Uh, and you will need to make sure that you get the one for the correct size. So this is a 14.1 inch widescreen, so you'll need to make sure you get one that matches exactly uh, with what came with your unit, because there are several different kinds. All right, so the tools you'll need to do this job include a Phillips head screwdriver, small one like that. I use a pick because it's easy to uh, pry stuff with it. You'll also need some rubbing alcohol to clean the CPU and the graphics chip as well as the heat sink uh, with just a standard paper towel is fine. And then you'll also need some thermal paste. Do not buy thermal adhesive. Just get normal CPU thermal paste and you'll be fine. You'll need your replacement heat sink. Make sure you buy the right one for the right size uh, screen. It's based on screen size and graphics card. So my model is a 14.1 inch NVIDIA. That's the one you'll need. First thing you'll want to do, remove the battery. And then we're going to remove the palm rest and the keyboard. To do that, you're going to be removing these four screws for the palm rest and this screw for the keyboard. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed these five screws. You'll now flip your laptop over, open it up, and then you're going to take your fingers right under here and pry up the uh, palm rest here. Come out like that. You'll see there's a little tab. Just pull it up. The palm rest will come away. Same thing with the keyboard. See there's a little tab right there. Just make sure you get a firm grip on the ribbon cable and just pop it right up. Okay, the next section we're going to need to remove is this bezel right here. All right, so to remove that bezel, we're going to need to flip it over and remove this screw, this screw, the right hand one, and this far left screw. So go ahead and remove those three screws. All right, once you remove those screws, again, that's this screw, this far corner screw, and this far corner screw. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back over, pull it open, and you'll note there's one screw here, and there should be one screw here as well. This model is missing it. Somebody has already been inside and they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, so go ahead and remove those two screws and then you're gently going to pry up on the outsides of the bezel. So usually I start on this side and just kind of work it over a little bit like that. Pry it up so it's a little bit loose, okay? You'll need to remove these final two screws right here. Now some models don't have this little shield right here, uh, but you'll need to remove these two screws to take the bezel off. I'll go ahead and do this. Okay, so you've removed these two screws, and now all that's left to do is gently pry up on this piece. Now it's really important to be careful on this side because it has some little D latches that go down in, and if you yank it, they'll break, and then it will never sit properly again. So just make sure that you are gentle uh, when you are prying it up. You can also use uh, like a guitar pick or something like that it may help you. Uh, pry it open. Okay. So that's what those hooks look like. You can see they're very prone to breaking. These ones aren't broken, but uh, they are very prone to breaking. Okay, set that aside. Okay, and you don't need to take off the LCD actually but we are going to remove a few things just to point them out before we start going through it. The speaker will need to come off. You'll need to unhook these two connections. This brace will come off and this brace will come off and then we'll have access to the heat sink. So go ahead and remove the speaker and undo these two wires. Okay, I've removed the speaker. It's just a matter of two screws on either end. I'd like to make a quick note that on these little connections, if you yank at the wire, it's possible that the wire will come out of the head. 
So it's always best that if you can, try and get a little bit um, of leverage underneath it when you're pulling it so that you can kind of pull up on the lip uh, and therefore not risk breaking the wires. Uh, again, when you, that's one reason why I use the pick um, because it's very easy to use. You'll need to remove this piece of tape right here if the tape has never been removed. Okay. And then remove these four screws. Got one, two, three, four. And this bracket actually will come out. Okay, so now you've removed all four screws. The next step you're going to want to do is just lift this back. And I actually don't take this out. I just lift it up uh, enough to get the heat sink out just so I don't mess up any of this wiring. You'll lift that up and then you'll need to push out these uh, LAN cables right here. Just be gentle, they'll, they'll, come, they'll come right out. Okay, so you've got them free. And the final step will be to remove these four screws. All right, you have removed the four screws here in the heatsink. Now you can go ahead and just pull up on the heatsink, and it'll feel a little bit sticky from the uh, thermal paste, but it will come up with a little bit of wiggling. Okay, and then you can flip it over, and you can kind of see here that it's filled with dirt and dust and nasty. Uh, whoever had this did not take very good care of it. This thermal pad right here should not be removed if it's whole. Now this one, as you can see, has kind of broken, so it would be a good idea to replace it if it is broken. These two areas are where you'll use the thermal paste. You don't want to use thermal paste in place of a thermal pad because it won't be thick enough. So you'll, you'll need a replacement thermal pad uh, if this one is damaged. So go ahead and make sure your new heat sink is clean. You use the rubbing alcohol in a towel and just wipe it off and make sure it's clean. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall. Okay, I've used my rubbing alcohol to clean the CPU and the graphics chip as well as this chip here. Uh, make sure all three are very clean. Uh, one thing you'll need to note is a lot of these are uh, they have like a metallic base in them, so if you get any little chips, you'll see like there's some on my finger. If you get any little chips on your motherboard, it could actually sort it out because it'll be uh, electrically conductive. So make sure that you're very thorough in cleaning and make sure there aren't any little scraps anywhere. Um, this is okay to use pretty liberally. Um, you'll just want to make sure that it's evaporated before you go turning it on. Um, so that's just one thing to note. It's okay for this to get on the motherboard. Just make sure that it has evaporated. It evaporates pretty quickly, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and it should be evaporated. All right, we are finally ready for reinstallation. You're going to go ahead and take your thermal paste and open it up. And you're just going to apply a small, maybe half a, maybe a quarter of a pea size. It really doesn't take a lot. What you're doing is just putting enough on the um, on the CPU so that uh, it will cover any imperfections in the surface of the heatsink. And you're going to just take this, thread it down in like that, and then seat it down. Okay, and we have it seated now. Now the first thing that I usually do is just put these in. I use kind of like a wheel pattern when I'm doing it. So do that one, do this one, do that one and tighten them a little bit and then tighten them evenly until it's all secured down. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so the heat sink is now installed. What we're gonna do next is we're going to feed these wires back into the little loom here and install this piece back where it goes right there with one of these small silver screws. Okay, you now have these all set. Next thing you're going to want to do is replace this loom. So uh, 
you'll want to make sure that it's holding the wires as it was when you took it apart. So these ones will go under this leg, they'll come around this little nub here, go under this, and then go across the top of the heat sink, and that's why this little heat shrink is there. So go ahead and replace this loom and plug these two wires back in. Right, we've got the loom replaced and these wires back in. Now we're just going to set the speaker back down on here and you'll get two more of these little silver screws and replace the screws. Now we can go ahead and replace the bezel. What you're going to want to take note of are these little clips. Get some light. There's some little clips right here and those feed into these magnesium uh, hooks right here. So those are just some things that you're going to want to take note of when you're sliding it back in. Okay, so once everything is back in, and everything should snap, snap into place, these will slide right in so you won't have any problems there. Just make sure the spacing is correct over here. And here it snap into place. And then replace these two screws and these two screws. Alright, go ahead and take your keyboard. The easiest way to do this is just grab this with one hand and kind of feed it down onto the little block. Press it down and then it slides in and presses down. Okay, and then how I do it is I just put it on its side like this and by putting the keyboard in first it kind of holds holds the bezel down and that's when I replace the three screws required for the bezel. So you can just go ahead and close it So these three screws that. Okay. And then finally replace the palm rest in the same fashion. Now just use your thumbs to make sure that it's lined up on the bottom and then you can kind of press it into place. The way these side hooks work is they'll hook underneath some hooks so press out a little bit and it'll be easier to push it down, close it. And when you put the screws in like this, you'll likely have to go from the ends because if you try and screw in the, one of the middle screws first, it won't catch. So it'll push down on the palm rest. Alrighty, then you can go ahead and replace your battery. And actually this battery is dead, so we won't, well, maybe it's not. There we go. No fan error. Thanks for watching.